Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys where we have a great show for you guys today, a lot of it on Jason Garrett, but first want to tell everybody about the Cowboys jersey deal that is still ongoing. I just don't know for how much longer. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. It's in the description. It's in the comments as well. These jerseys are 25% off. A ton of different ones are on sale, but I don't know how much longer the deal is going to last. So do it while you still can. Black Friday, of course, is coming up. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey go check it out and then coming up right now a whole bunch of jason garrett talk let's dive into jason garrett to begin the show is it super bowl or bust for garrett i'm gonna give this three stars now for starters this really isn't that new i mean you guys have asked it hundred times on the show for good reason we talked about this shit in literally january of la of this year it is, we have talked about it truly all year long. Now, it's always been two or three. Started at two, and I bumped up to three. Garrett is on the hot seat. That has been known the entire year because he didn't have an extension. The expectation this year was take the team further, and Jerry Jones made that very clear again today. He's clearly, it's just not the, the right word here, Jerry's pissed. <laughs> That's what he feels like right now. And he, he says, let me tell you, this was on NFL, uh, NFL Network today. No one in this country has earned the right to say, I'm a Jason Garrett man more than me. That is very true. I certainly have not earned that right. I am his man, and we want the same thing. That's for our players to play at their very best and want his staff to coach at the very last, or best. But the bottom line is we get graded. I'm in a business. I don't have to win the Super Bowl in business every year. It's not about the guy who's talking about his like, oil stuff. I can come in sixth, have a hell of a year. But in this case, you have got to come in first. You've got to. So fundamentally, you've asked for something that is a very narrow window to begin with. I want Jason to get it done. Guess what happens if it doesn't get done, folks? He's probably gone. So type FGs in the comments section because I know that's what we all want. But I will remind everybody, there are some exceptions here. Maybe if somebody gets hurt, if Dak gets hurt like the title game, where maybe Garrett gets another chance but the window is, is very narrow right now for Garrett, and the patience is stretched so thin, I don't know if it's there anymore for Jerry Jones whatsoever. Now, while you're down there typing in your FGs, because I know how you guys operate, predict the score for me. Bills versus the Dallas Cowboys. It's a, I would almost say, must-win Thanksgiving game. The Cowboys dropped this one. Maybe Jerry gives him the rest of the year, but he's going to be livid against a Bills team that has a better mark, but... I don't think they're as good as the Dallas Cowboys. Now, if Jason Garrett gets canned, there are some coaches out there that have been mentioned. What about Urban Meyer and Josh Fernandez? Maybe you saw this report today. I'm going to give it two stars. Urban I like much more than McDaniels as a fit, and I'll tell you guys why. Urban's track record speaks for itself. Right? Like he's, he's done a fantastic job. Now, Mike Freeman of, of Bleacher Report, who is the softest man in sports, doesn't like being told that, that you disagree with him, he'll block you, even if you do it in actually a pretty nice and respectful way. Crazy, right? Yeah, he's kind of a clown. Now, he says that Meyer and McDaniels have been pegged as the favorites, and Meyer would fit well with Dak and Zeke. My concerns with Meyer are not about his coaching, it's about A, does he actually want to coach in the NFL? I know you guys saw the, the video of Meyer saying he'd have interest, but he spoke in the past tense. And as of late, seems like maybe he's not all that interested based on his recent comments. And oh, by the way, the health issues, he's left two different jobs because of them. Now, you can put the health in quotations if you want. That's a big deal for me. At least it gives me pause, but I would have interest. Josh McDaniels, meanwhile, I eh, don't know. He burned a lot of bridges with that Colts decision. And my issue for McDaniels is, A, he's kind of the de facto coach in waiting with the Patriots. Doesn't he want to work with his own guy? He would not get that in Dallas. Now, Freeman had other guys on his list that he has heard beyond just Urban Meyer, Josh McDaniels. Meyer, again, I can get on board with that. McDaniels, not so much. He also threw out Jim Harbaugh, who I don't think is about to leave Michigan. Sean Payton, whom, as we know, has already signed his extension. Then he threw in Robert Slay, the D.C. for the 49ers. Wait a minute. I've seen this list before. Vegas, one of the Vegas sites put out their betting odds like two days before this. It's the same fucking list. Wait a minute. Now, there are two theories here. 
Freeman made, made the whole thing up. Or his source just didn't know him, but just saw and said, okay, these guys make sense. Or maybe Vegas is super duper clued in. Super suspicious, right? They are the same list, except he pulled off the most obvious name on there, Lincoln Riley. Just, just curious. Also, I'll, I'll throw this out there. The sourcing was other NFL executives, i.e. people not within the Cowboys organization. I just, I don't know. I, I don't know if I buy that list as the list, knowing that I think a lot of these names aren't that probable. So who do you guys want as the head coach? Let me know in the comments section. You guys know where I feel. I want Lincoln Riley. I've heard a variety of names thrown out there. Let me know. We've asked this a bunch of times. I'd love to hear your guys' answers. Feel free to throw it in there in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Let's move on now to Jason Witten. And is it time to bench him? I'm going to give this one three stars just like our first one on today's show. Now, it's not quite four because I do still think you kind of want to use Witten a little bit. He's not a complete disaster, and he's certainly a better blocker than Blake Jarwin, and that's what we're all talking about, right? We, ah, we don't care about Dalton Schultz. We want Blake Jarwin out there. Jason Witten is not the same offensive player and guy he was. He's just not. You have to use Blake Jarwin more in passing situations. And this is what pisses me off. The Cowboys are literally doing the opposite. Jason Witten, the bulk, the, the majority of his snaps come on passing plays. He run blocks less and is on the passing plays more. Blake Jarwin is actually being used more to block. So for reference, Jason Witten is playing 77% of his snaps. 30, and he's playing in passing downs, 79.6, 2.6% more. Blake Jarwin, meanwhile, is on the field for 38% of snaps, and is only 33% on passing downs. What are you doing? That is such gross misuse of your personnel. Win can block. That's fine. He can still be used a little bit. But we were told oh, by the Cowboys, they leaked it, and they friggin' lied through their teeth because it was obvious the entire time, oh, Win's only going to play 25% of the snaps. He won't be a progress blocker. Guess what he is? He's a progress blocker. If you're going to use two tight ends to block, it, it shouldn't be Blake Jarwin. That's not his That's not his role. It's like asking Byron Jones instead of Jordan Lewis to guard Julian Edelman. Doesn't work out. It's not maximizing your players. That's a coaching failure, plain and simple. So who should be tight end one? Like W for Witten, J for Jarwin. Frankly, flip their snaps. Let Jarwin be out there 80% of the time when it's a pass instead of 33%. Flip those numbers around. That's way, way better for the Cowboys in the end. Now, we're going to get some more Jason Witten talk here in just a second. But first, we get a special guest stop by the show. We welcome back in Mick from Kashiyama the Smart Tailor once again for some NFC East picks before Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And to everyone watching as well. Hopefully the Cowboys win this week. Well, we will begin, though, with the Packers at the New York Giants. The Giants have dropped seven straight games so Mick is it going to become eight this week I definitely think it will I do they've been putting up a really good fight but they continuously are getting defeated and I think Green Bay is going to be looking for a bounce back in this one and their New York's defense is just not going to be able to keep up so I'm going 31 20. I'll make note here Cowboys fans as weird as this sounds we actually kind of want the Giants to win could maybe help out for wild card not that that really matters too much but Giants there are a big, big factor. I want to remind everyone and a big shout out to Blake Harville for winning the Kashiyama free suit giveaway on Instagram. He's going to be coming in later this week for a fitting. So Mick, why don't you tell everyone about that process? Absolutely. So the first step is booking an appointment with me. Get you in. We start talking about your visual details, selecting those fabrics. Then we take a couple of body measurements to create your custom template. And that is it in direct delivery to you. So super easy. Super easy indeed. Kind of like playing the Redskins this year. Sorry, producer Alicia, but that was a worthwhile burn there. They play the Carolina Panthers this weekend. You going Carolina too? I'm definitely going to have to go Carolina, especially after that game against the Saints, which they were robbed. 
Washington literally has the worst rushing defense in the league right now, and I am really hoping that they've got some extra medics on hand for this game because it's going to hurt. I don't think Producer Alicia is very happy with I'm you right so now. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Producer Alicia, but I'm going 34-20, and Carolina might blow that out of the water. Let's move on then to the Eagles and the Dolphins. As we all know, we are cheering for Miami, knowing that's not going to go very well. What are you thinking of this one? As much as I hate to say it, I do think that Philly is going to pull this one out. Probably. I mean, this is their first shot at staying in the NFC East and the wild card races until they're up against some actual tough composition when they play the Cowboys in Week 16. So. You've got the Dolphins gotta, covering, though. I do. Interesting. I know. I think I think they're going to put up a pretty okay. solid fight. They okay. are in Miami. You know, maybe Philly's not used to the humidity okay. in Florida at this point. Maybe it's, it's just wishful thinking. I don't know. So I'm going 24-17 for Philly. We'll get to the Cowboys game here in a little bit. But first, Kashiyama has their Black Friday sale still ongoing. Nick, watch show everyone watching what the deal is here. Absolutely. We are offering 20% off of absolutely everything. That is huge savings. So not only on full suits, but all upgrade options and separates. So time is running out, though. Appointments are booking really fast. So if you want to take advantage of our first ever Black Friday sale, mm -hmm. contact me. Let's schedule an appointment. And that includes this video we're showing right now for the Modern Tailor line as well. What exactly is absolutely. that? Absolutely. Modern Tailor is our latest launch here in Dallas and in the U.S. So it is all machine washable. Super helpful. You just toss it on and you look so put together. You're able to throw it in the little bag that it comes with put it in the dryer and the washer to refresh it, and you are good to go. So if you travel a lot or if you're an urban commuter, this is a really great option. Reminder, folks, you can get your appointment set up right now with Mick. Text her at 214-448-9037. We'll get that link in the description and in the comments for you guys. It's 214-448-9037. That deal is going on until December 2nd. Better move while you still can. Let's move on now to the Cowboys in the thanks one of the Thanksgiving games. The Bills coming to town with a not so great offense, but a very good defense. What are you thinking in this matchup? Well, first of all, I think that Garrett might want to hide because all of us here in Dallas would much rather see his head on a platter than turkey this Thanksgiving. That's a good line. And like that one. while thank you. Good. Thanks. And while the Bills do have a really solid defense, I just don't see them serving up anything very impressive. I do think it's going to be a little bit of a nail-biter, though. So I'm going 27-21 in Got favor of the boys. The Bills just barely covering that one. Go ahead, everyone, in the comments. Throw in your score predictions. Hopefully we have a good Thanksgiving that features a Cowboys. I would like a comfortable win this time around. Let's move on now to Jason Witten. What about as the head coach? God, where are these rumors coming from? Fake news. Terrible idea. I don't get it. Um, it's from Tim Callishaw who said it was a possibility. I'm giving it fake news because I refuse to put this idea out there as a good idea. This, I, I get it. It, it. Legend, Goat Hall of Famer. He's awesome. He's awesome. All right. But this, this fascination we have with great player will make a great coach. There's actually zero correlation. Like, it, it doesn't work out that way. Now, I am happy to have Jason Witten come in and be the tight ends coach. Sign me up for that. He should be a coach before he should be a player right now anyway. But hiring a first-time head coach as the coach of the Dal as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, that is wildly reckless. And it's a just bad decision through and through. It, it doesn't make sense for the Cowboys to bring in Witten. That's as the head coach. Bring him in as assistant. Sure, I got no problem with that. Let him go coach high school somewhere for all, all I care. I, I, I can live with that. But the, that is a very bad idea here for the Cowboys to bring in Witten and just head coach. What could go wrong? So many things. Now, it's not the worst idea I've ever heard. So what I want you guys to do is send me your worst head coach ideas. You can put them in the comment section if you want. You can also hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. Maybe we'll do a future show. If Garrett gets fired, maybe we'll make a show only on bad head coach ideas. But let me know. Hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. Witten is up there, as is people like Jack Del Rio. Terrible, terrible idea. 
Let's talk about the injury side of things now, unfortunately. Is Leighton Van Der Esch going to return this year? I'm going to give it two stars. I really want to give it three, but there is a lot of uncertainty right now around the neck injury for Leighton Van Der Esch. I am hopeful that he comes back this year. I just don't know for sure. He's not going to play against the Bills. He's out. The recovery, it's a neck. You never know. It flared back up. He was able to play through it. That's always concerning. The Cowboys are, are kind of saying, yeah, you know, we're optimistic. We're not going to rule them out for the rest of the year. We're going to have to wait and see. I think that this is the ultimate two-star rumor because I just I just don't know. I hope he comes back. You can get by with Jalen Smith and Sean Lee and Joe Thomas, but you want your first-round pick from last year who was a damn pro bowler out there. And I understand if you're concerned. I mean, it makes sense, right? We've seen Cowboys great linebacker injury problems. So what is your worry level at with Leighton Van Der Esch's injury? Rate this romance scale of 1 to 10. 1 being what injury? He's playing this week. He's not. 10 being you're freaking out and you want to go draft Isaiah Simmons in round 1, even though that's not how you build a roster with so many picks at the linebacker position. I'm still going to be at about a 5 or a 6. I I'm not panicking yet. But it definitely gives me pause overall for the Dallas Cowboys. All right, moving on now to Antoine Woods. Is he out against the Buffalo Bills? Well, four stars on this one. He's not going to be able to go. Has that knee injury flaring back up on him with an MCL sprain. That's a big red flag for the Cowboys. He's not going to go. Guess who's back then? Tristan Hill is going to be able to play for the Cowboys. And we shall see if Tristan Hill can make an impact against the Bills team that likes to run the football and has a very mobile quarterback in Josh Allen. So with Woods out, it means you'll see more Malik Collins at the one technique. Doesn't pay off very often. Chris Covington will be your starter. You'll see Tristan Hill. And the Cowboys, I'm sure for some godforsaken reason, will continue to use Kerry Hyder as a three technique on passing downs doesn't make sense now or on rundown excuse me Jeff Heath I want to make note of him as well shoulder injuries we will see if he will be able to go if he's not able to go I'm very curious who will start because in the one snap Jeff Heath missed well they did bring in Darian Thompson but you know who played more snaps at strong safety last week for the Dallas Cowboys it's actually Josh Jones so I'm curious to see how that goes meanwhile you Donovan Wilson Hive members out there Sorry, continues to not get on the field. But beyond Woods and Heath and Van Der Esch, the Cowboys are actually very healthy right now entering the game on Thanksgiving against the Bills. Speaking of that game, we've got one more special guest to come on and help us preview it. We've got your Kashiyama custom suit winner, Blake Harville, on the show. Blake, thanks for coming down. He's about to go get fitted here in just a second. But first, Blake, have you ever won a contest before? Uh, nothing like this. Nothing on a bigger scale. Not that I can remember, at least, which is why I'm saying that. But, uh, no, never won anything. Well, let's talk like about this. the Cowboys game, then. They are hosting the Buffalo Bills. We'll get your score prediction in just a second. But what are you expecting from this game? Uh, geez. I think Jason Garrett's going to have a good bounce back game, because as much as we talk about firing Jason Garrett, it always seems that, you know, the next game he does something crazy. It's very, and, uh, very accurate. Still, I don't know. I haven't seen the numbers this week, but we were the number one offense, so I expect at home. Crowd's going to get into it. Defense mm -hmm. is going to, if they play anything like they did against the Pats, should have no problem dealing with Josh oh, Allen. Hopefully that's I the case. think, uh, yeah, so I think Cowboys are going to win 27-20, win to 20, if I had to guess. I was about to say, I don't think Josh Allen's going to do much against Robert Quinn and DeMarcus Let's Lawrence rush him. All right, so you got Blake's prediction there. Everyone in the comments section, go ahead and throw yours in as well. In the meantime, Blake, we're going to let you go get fitted for that custom suit. Appreciate that. Thanks, and congrats again on winning, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.